We love certainty. It's evident in the quest of knowing exactly what's going to happen or what happened in the past. The untold truth about certainty is that we aren't actually certain at all. We love certainty so much because of how little we can be certain about. Uncertainty is filled to the brim in the universe, and humans have only experienced a tiny speck of that uncertainty. That's how massive the universe really is. Astronomers say that we've only been able to understand 5% of the universe with the infinite expanse that it is. Imagine what we've been missing out on. But what is the universe made of? And is it really empty? In the early 1990s, the expansion of the universe was a heated topic of discussion among astronomers and scientists across the globe. The idea was one of two things, it might have enough energy density to stop its expansion and re-collapse, or it might have so little energy density that it would never stop expanding. But the general consensus was that gravity would certainly slow the expansion as time went on. Although we haven't seen the slowing theoretically, the universe had to slow. The universe is full of matter and the attractive force of gravity pulls all matter together. Then came 1998 and the Hubble Space Telescope, whose observations of very distant supernovae show that, a long time ago, the universe was actually expanding more slowly than it is today. So, the expansion of the universe has not been slowing due to gravity as everyone thought, it has been accelerating. This, if you already didn't figure out, no one expected. No one could explain it, but it was identified that something was causing it. Eventually, theorists came up with three sorts of explanations. They talk about the possibility of it being a result of a long discarded version of Einstein's theory of gravity, one that contained what was called a cosmological constant, or there was some strange kind of energy fluid that filled space. Theorists ponder about the integrity of Einstein's theory of gravity. Maybe there was something wrong with his theory, and a new theory could include some kind of field that creates this cosmic acceleration. Theorists still don't know what the correct explanation is, but they have given the solution a name. It's called dark energy. Now, you've probably heard of dark matter. It is the corresponding force that slows down the expansion of the universe, while dark energy speeds it up. Although that might just be a little too simple an explanation to go by, for now, I think it'll suffice. Dark matter works like an attractive force, a kind of cosmic cement that holds our universe together. This is because dark matter does interact with gravity, but it doesn't reflect, absorb, or emit light. Meanwhile, dark energy is a repulsive force, a sort of anti-gravity that drives the universe's perpetual expansion. Dark energy is the far more dominant force of the two, accounting for roughly 68% of the universe's total mass and energy. Dark matter makes up 27%. The remaining 5% is all the regular matter we see and interact with every day. That last number is pretty darn small if you ask me. A Swiss-born astronomer named Fritz Zwicky studied images of the roughly 1,000 galaxies that make up the Coma Cluster in the 1930s. What he spotted was something that he mentions as funny behavior. The galaxies moved so fast that they should simply fly apart. He speculated that some kind of dark matter held them together. A whole while later, decades to be precise, astronomer Vera Rubin and Kent Ford found a similar phenomenon when they studied the rotation rates of individual galaxies. The stars at a galaxy's outer edge should circle slower than stars near the center. That's the way planets in our solar system orbit. Instead, they noticed that the stars on a galaxy's outskirts orbit just as fast or even faster than the stars closer in. Rubin and Ford had found more evidence that some invisible form of matter is apparently holding the universe together. Rubin once explained in an interview, Even stars at the periphery are orbiting at high velocities. There has to be a lot of mass to make the stars orbit so rapidly, but we can't see it. We call this invisible mass dark matter. Researchers now have many other lines of evidence that suggest dark matter is real. You'd be surprised to know that the existence of dark matter is so widely accepted that it's part of the so-called standard model of cosmology. 
which forms the foundation of how scientists understand the universe's birth and evolution. Without it, we can't explain how we got here. It isn't just some sci-fi concept anymore. Here's the thing, though. A high status like this puts pressure on cosmologists to find definitive evidence that dark matter exists and that their model of the universe is correct. For decades, physicists all over the world have employed increasingly high-tech instruments to try to detect dark matter. So far, they've found no signs of it. According to NASA, we are much more certain what dark matter is not than what it actually is. The first thing to point out about dark matter is that it is dark. As obvious as it may seem, it basically means that it is not in the form of visible stars and planets. Observations show that there is far too little visible matter in the universe to make up the 27% required by the observations. Moving on to the second point about dark matter, it is not in the form of dark clouds of normal matter, matter made up of particles called baryons. We know this because we would be able to detect baryonic clouds by their absorption of radiation passing through them. Thirdly, dark matter is not antimatter because we do not see the unique gamma rays that are produced when antimatter annihilates with matter. And lastly, we can rule out large galaxy-sized black holes on the basis of how many gravitational lenses we see. High concentrations of matter bend light passing near them from objects further away, but we do not see enough lensing events to suggest that such objects make up the required 25% dark matter contribution. Although astronomers have known that our universe is expanding for about a century now, telescopic observations have shown that most galaxies are moving away from each other. This implies that the galaxies were closer together in the distant past, which led the evidence to pile up for the Big Bang. On the flip side, though, astronomers assumed that the combined gravitational pull of all the cosmos, stars, and galaxies should be slowing down the universe's expansion. Perhaps it would even someday collapse back in on itself in a big crunch. That was later debunked in the late 1990s when two teams of astronomers spotted something that didn't make any sense. Researchers studying supernovas in the most distant galaxies discovered that distant galaxies were moving away from us faster than nearby galaxies. The universe wasn't just expanding, the expansion was speeding up. Astronomer Brian Schmidt, who led one of the two teams, told the New York Times in 1998, My own reaction is somewhere between amazement and horror. Amazement because I just did not expect this result, and horror in knowing that it will likely be disbelieved by a majority of astronomers who, like myself, are extremely skeptical of the unexpected. Rather than refute it, subsequent observations have only made the evidence for dark energy more robust. In fact, some prominent critics of dark matter still accept the existence of dark energy. This doesn't necessarily mean researchers know what dark energy is, far from it, but they can describe its role in the universe thanks to Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Einstein didn't know about dark energy, but his equation suggests new space can come into existence. And he also included a fudge factor in relativity called the cosmological constant, which he added, and later regretted, to keep the universe from collapsing inward. This idea allows space itself to have energy. However, scientists have still never actually seen this force on Earth. Out of the several explanations for dark energy, one of the most prominent ones looks at it as a property of space. Albert Einstein was the first person to realize that empty space is not nothing. Space has amazing properties, many of which are just beginning to be understood. The first property that Einstein discovered is that it is possible for more space to come into existence. Then, one version of Einstein's gravity theory, the version that contains a cosmological constant, makes a second prediction. Empty space can possess its own energy. Because this energy is a property of space itself, it would not be diluted as space expands. As more space comes into existence, more of this energy of space would appear. 
As a result, this form of energy would cause the universe to expand faster and faster. We still have no clue why the cosmological constant should even be there, much less why it would have exactly the right value to cause the observed acceleration of the universe. Some theoretical physicists think there's an entire dark realm of particles and forces out there just waiting to be discovered. Whatever dark energy and dark matter are made of, they seem to be playing tug-of-war with our universe, both holding it together and pulling it apart. Even though we're a little patchy on the details when it comes to the difference between dark matter and dark energy, or if they even exist and are what we thought they would be, both of which have only become prominent in recent years. Scientists have spent decades trying to prove and discover its existence. This is where James Webb's discoveries will play a crucial role in understanding these concepts. With the web peering into the dark sky, scientists could be closer than ever to finding answers to what dark matter is and what dark energy is and what causes them. Hopefully, we get an answer sooner rather than later. So what do you think? What is dark matter? What is dark energy? Do they even exist? And what evidence will the James Webb Telescope provide? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Traveler.